I grew up in the church. Um, dad, my dad was a pastor. Um, went to went to church three times a week. Became a leader in my youth group. Um, was leading worship, leading small groups. Would talk about freedom, but I was truly never free because I was living a double life. Because in fourth grade, ten years old, all the kids around me were talking about sex, and I did what was natural. I Googled it. And it wasn't my first time seeing pornography. The first time I saw it was in kindergarten. But it was the first time in my life that it produced gratification. And it led to years and years and years of a misled gratification in my life. We talked about it through high school with friends. Talked about it through college. In high school we thought, okay, what do you need to do? You need to confess it. You need to develop accountability and Christ will take it away. So we'd confess it. We'd develop accountability. Never took it away. I went off to college thinking that this new Christian environment would take me out of my addiction. And I learned so quickly that it wasn't the environment feeding it, but it was an addiction deep within my soul. It tried for years and years, a total of eight years to get out with confession and accountability. It never worked. And it came up to my junior year, Thanksgiving time, and my little sister and my parents and I are sitting around talking about conflict in the past because pornography had withdrew me from the family. It kills intimacy. It kills your relationships with the people around you. And my little sister began to tell me her story. And she has kidney disease. It's called nephrolic syndrome, where her kidneys, they don't function or filter correctly. So she was put on some hefty, hefty steroids in high school. And I'm off at college during this time, not seeing this happen. And she began to tell me her story where the steroids had so, such side effects on her life that she wanted to commit suicide. And she said, Austin... When I wanted to commit suicide, I looked at your life. I looked at the potential you had, and I didn't commit suicide because I didn't want it to affect you. And it broke me. Because at that point, I had lost hope. And I didn't understand how when I cared so little about myself that someone would care for me that much that they would save their own life for me. And at that moment, my parents thought we had a breakthrough because it truly broke me. But truly, it led to about two and a half months of a deep depression in my life because I had completely lost hope. I tried for eight years to get out of porn, and it never worked. And it came up to March 28th of last year, where I woke up one morning to text from friends, from family, after withdrawing completely, saying, what's going on? We love you. We care about you. Why aren't you reaching out? At that moment, I realized that this addiction in my life is not just affecting me. It's affecting the people around me, and it gave me the motivation to change. And so I named it that morning, I claimed it, and I called home. And it started a process in my life of three things. Number one, repentance. And you can't truly repent until you see your sin as God sees your sin. And that starts with an education. An education on porn, what it does to your brain, what it does to your emotions, what it does to the people around you. An education on the holiness of God, his divine view of sexuality, and how pornography is a counterfeit to that sexuality. Second, accountability. Now, the church today sees accountability as sitting around once a week, a bunch of guys or girls for breakfast, asking four hard questions and walking away. That is not accountability. Accountability is committing to a life of openness and vulnerability with the people around you and walking hand in hand until you're out. And not just talking about the symptom of pornography, but talking about the wound of pornography. And that leads to the third thing, counseling. Because I tried for years to get out, and nothing ever worked until I went to counseling. Because pornography is not your problem. Pornography is your medication. It's a medication for a deeper wound or a lacking in your life that you go to because that's how you're reaching out. That's how you're reaching out for satisfaction. So it's been over a year of finding freedom. But am I truly free? I'd say no. Because I don't think people realize that my generation was raised on this stuff. We watched it through all these fundamental years. It affects the way we think. It affects our emotions. But the process is so worth it. Thank you.